Bonjour, mes enfants, c'est votre Uncle Dan. Yes, it's Uncle Dan, the vinyl man, back with another episode of Uncle Dan's Vintage Vinyl. And here today to be nice for a change. Uh, I know, it's it's hard. Here today to talk about uh, talk about this artist, um, Miss Gloria Lynn, uh, who was a jazz singer, born in 1929, uh, uh, had a you know had a church gospel background was actually actually had some opera training, and then started performing really you know kind of seriously in the fifties. First album was nineteen fifty eight. I don't have that album although I'd like to get it. Uh, but uh, and my dog Pancake is here to to assist me. But uh, she uh, uh, she a contralto uh, with it seems to me. A very interesting tone uh, in her voice. Uh, very, very lovely tone. Very, very warm. A lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, there's the, the timbre is is very, uh, very rich. Very, very velvety sort of timbre. Uh, a little grain on it, you know, which is what I, you know, I kind of like to think of it. You know, if you, if you think of photography, you know, photographs with some grain in them give some texture to them. Uh, it seems to me that that's, uh, you know, that describes her voice. Uh, uh, and again, a contralto, so lower, uh, and just uh, just a very lovely voice. I, I mention her from time to time to folks, and and uh, they don't, you know, they're like, you know, who is she? Uh, I've mentioned Nancy Wilson. I mention her pretty often, a very great jazz vocalist. Uh, and I think Gloria Lynn's right up here with her. Uh, just a, you know, great voice. I don't think that she was, from what I have heard so far, there may be others, I don't think she was as well recorded as Nancy Wilson was. I don't think she, I don't think they had her in the studios with the microphones and quite quite the skill of recording that, that Nancy Wilson had uh, with hers. Uh, but you know, still the stuff sounds sounds great. She clearly had a magnificent voice, and uh, and I wish she were better. You know, I wish she were better known. Uh, this is somebody who really deserves to be uh, celebrated. I think I mentioned, born 1929, died 2013, just short of her, just short of her 83rd birthday, uh, and uh, had uh, had some hard times. You know, she recorded in the, in the 50s, the 50s, 60s, and. In the seventies and eighties, did some, you know, I think continued to record some, but not very much. She had some hard times there. Uh, was even homeless. Had to do work other than singing. Uh, and again, a shame because you have somebody with a voice as 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 superb as hers was, and she she had to resort to other, you know, resort to other work, and was even was even homeless. Uh, really unfortunate. She apparently did not, you know earn much money from uh, the albums she released. She got very few royalties for, uh, from those, even though she wrote some of the stuff. She was, uh, I'm blanking on which ones she wrote, but uh, I think uh, I Wish You Love, which is one I'll mention later. Anyway, she wrote stuff, you know, she was, she was, you know, a writer as well as a singer, uh, and yet did not make much money over the years. Had to keep touring, had to keep performing to have any money. Really hard life. And of course, that's you know that's that's still true for people with labels. Labels, uh, you know, have taken advantage, of, you know, of artists, musicians for since there have been labels. Uh, uh, often true, especially perhaps especially true of, of uh, African American artists. Although you know there are people like the Creedence Clearwater Revival who had the big fight with uh, Fantasy Records, and uh, you know we got Zants Can't Dance from that, and got a. Uh, Fogarty V uh, uh, Fantasy Records out of that. Uh, uh, I believe that, uh, yeah, that was a Supreme Court case. Anyway, the uh, I have four albums by by uh, Ms. Lynn, whose, whose name was actually famed Nancy Wilson. Her name was Gloria Wilson, but she married or was living with, I guess married, a man named, uh, last name, I'm blanking on his first name, but his last name was Allen, A-L-L-E-Y-N-E, -L -L -E and uh, announcers at clubs couldn't get it right, so she just started going by Gloria Lynn. So I even made some notes for this. This is uh, A Touch of Tenderness from uh, 1960, uh, which has 
uh, try a little tenderness, uh, which, you know, then Otis Redding made famous, uh, you know, in, in the 60s, later in the, six, later in the 60s. Great version by Otis Redding, a great version by Gloria Lynn here. Uh, both well worth having. This is a, a record club. It was a, a by from Everest Records. She recorded, I guess, mainly on Everest for, for the early part of her career. This was an Everest record, but with this jacket and this title, it was a Capitol Records, uh, uh, Capitol Record Club record. So uh, this is, I believe, a mono, a mono pressing of this as well. Uh, sounds pretty good, though. I like it. I have um, uh, this little boy of mine uh, from 1961. Uh, this was this was on uh, uh, on Everest uh, records, uh, recorded on 35 millimeter film. This has maybe a little better sound. The the other one there, you know, I, th I think. Uh, they may not have had the you know the right the right master. It may have been may have been used a bit much. I think I paid three dollars for this one, and I paid I didn't pay very much for the other one for the for this one either. So another great album, and the uh, B side of this is very bluesy sounding. Uh, she could really she could have been a blues belter really if she'd wanted to, but she she typically was in a sort of a smoother a smoother style. Given her voice, either style really suited her uh she could she could uh you know she could sh sh with that richness uh that she had that timbre she had she could be very uh, very smooth but she she also had power there and could get a get more of a growl going on uh this is my funny valentine uh by design 1962 this was i uh this was a this was an Everett, but Everest, but uh, was then done on these design records, and you can see the in the back, uh, you know, uh, nothing really about her. This is, uh, you know, uh, the people uh, that they have. This was a Pickwick out Pickwick uh, release, so uh, and not the best, maybe not the best sound quality uh, because it's going to be at a, at a generation back. Uh, but but uh, uh, very fun with uh, with kind of bluesy uh, side B on there. Uh, maybe that's the other one that has the side B. And then this is the first one I got. Uh, I wish you love. I wish you love was a big hit for her in 1964. Uh, this album is from 1967. This is another compilation on or a re-release on Sunset Records. Uh, so from 1967, it was not the original release, and may contribute it to a to a sounding, to my mind, a little muffled. Still, it's great. This is the first album I got by her. It was in a batch. I've, I've mentioned this before in her, my Nancy Wilson, and maybe in regard to some others. Uh, I got a batch, a big batch of vinyl, mainly for classical music. I wanted to get some classical music, but I got a bit, big batch of vinyl, and uh, one of the some of the things in there were this and a, a Nancy Wilson, uh, and I'm blanking because I'm thinking of this right now. Uh, 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 How glad I am was Nancy Wilson album, which was probably her biggest seller. But the Gloria Lynn album was this one, and uh, I, I first tried the Nancy Wilson album, thinking I wouldn't like it. Uh, and instead, I very much did. And then I thought, well, I'll try this, and I put it on. I was like. This is also great. It was kind of funny. Uh, I, when I took it out of the sleeve, uh, after you know, after it did not have a, uh, it did not have an insert. It did not have a right, uh, you know, a, a protector inside. Did not have a, did not have a, you know, it had a jacket. Did not have the sleeve, and it was filthy. And also the labels fell off. The, the labels fell off. So I, I. I thought, well, the labels are off, so I cleaned the heck out of it uh, and uh, then glued the labels on with uh, just with white glue, just Elmer's glue, um, thinking that that would be enough. And, you know, it seemed to have been enough. Uh, it, it was still very, very much a mess. The first few times I played it, it very crackly, very noisy. But uh, I find that if I, you know, keep playing an album on, a, on a, an elliptical with an elliptical stylus, 
uh, I keep dragging up, you know, I'll be dragging up uh, dust bunnies out of it. And eventually, you know, it'll start getting cleaner and better. This is, you know, not perfect uh, by any means. Uh, it had not been well cared for. But, you know, I, I get past that. It's old stuff. It's kind of fun. I'm playing this on a, on a, a, a turntable, a Denon DP, uh, DP-15F, I believe. Uh, yeah, DP-15F, which has a, uh, as it's called, a, a microprocessor controlled servo tracer tonar. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the dynamic servo tracer tone arm, and the the tone arm. You know, most tone arms on on uh, turntables are just, you know, they're designed to be you know as frictionless as possible. Uh, linear tracking turntables are different, and I'll probably do something about linear trackers later. For those of you who don't know about them. this, though, the uh, there is actually the uh, computer control of the tone arm. Uh, to reduce, uh, uh, helps reduce resonances in the tone arm and uh, reduce tracking errors, uh, re reduce the tracking error. So, oh, excuse me, I've been working a lot lately. Uh, anyway, it's a, uh, it works nicely. The, the turntable works nicely. It's automatic. It has repeat on it, which I kind of like. But an automatic turntable works, works well. It's sporting an, an Andante S cartridge, and Andante is the same as, uh, actually I've got one here, same as the uh, uh, Sumico Pearl. I can't remember who first made the Sumico Pearl. Uh, this has a conical stylus, although I think a, a, a 0 0.05 or 0 0.6 mil, uh, some of the some of the conicals are 0 0.07 or, or 0 0.7 or 0 0.07. Uh, mills, uh, so they're they're a little fatter. This is a little narrow. It gets down a little better into the groove. Sounds pretty nice, kind of on the warm side, just as this pearl is. The pearl has a has the Sumico pearl. Uh, I don't know if it's going to. Uh, it's not not going to focus. But the Sumico pearl has 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 a bonded elliptical. This has a bonded conical. You know, gonna be a little difference in sound, uh, but it works pretty well. Anyway, I've got a, a tone, you know, got it queued up. I got a, I got a, you know, copyright claim on this, but this is for uh, review purposes. I don't know how to tell you, you know, I can tell you all day long what she sounds like, but you won't know. So let's drop the cue arm down here. This is on I Wish You Love. Uh, you know, you can hear some noise down in there. There's some pops on here. Uh, uh, Goodbye. No use leaving without you. I think even with the tone, this is even, where our story ends. even with the boxed in, boxed in sound of the album, you can hear the quality of her voice. Goodbye. Uh, let our hearts call it a day. Yeah. Uh, but before a, you walk away, sort of a mask quality. It's almost I like a. I sincerely want to say. It's a bit like a French horn to me. Uh, uh, the, I wish you bluebirds in the spring. That's that's beautiful. To give your heart a song to sing. Yeah, that's that's very and lovely. Then a kiss, but more than this. I wish yeah. you love. You can see why this is a, yeah, this should have been a big hit. Should be a big and hit today. In July, oh. a lemonade yeah. To cool you in some leafy glade. Yeah, again. I wish you hell. The recording isn't as good. More than well. Recording could be better. I wish you love. That's beautiful. My breaking heart. I agree too. But you and I could never be. Oh, yeah. So with my best, yeah. my very best, yeah. I'll set you free. I'll end it there. I uh, wanted to get you through into the bridge there. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, just a great voice. Well, something of a masked quality there, uh, but it's just like there's a, you get a sense of a lot of, a lot of stuff going on down in the vocal chambers there, uh, and a lot of involvement of the chest uh, in, in that as she's singing. Uh, so, you know, really, really producing the sound down in through here, you can really get that feeling of that. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. I think it's it's sad that she's not better known than she is. And I hope you'll go out and, you know, find her some Gloria Lynn. This is Uncle Dan the Vinyl Man, wishing as always my mes enfants. Au revoir, et aussi. A bientôt!